Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my show. I have an incredible interview for you today which is all about posture. How we hold ourselves, how we can improve it and how it impacts not just our body but also our mindset. In this interview I have Mariam who is a yoga teacher and a Feldenkrais method teacher. After she finished her yoga studies and embarked on a four-year Feldenkrais method training, she knew her life purpose was to help people with their posture. Welcome, Maria, to um, my show. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I've been wanting to get you actually on the show for a few uh, weeks now. So it's really, really a pleasure to have you here because I've been watching you for a while. I've been following you for a while and you've been doing some amazing things and you spreading awareness around posture. So would you tell us a little bit about your story, how you started, how you got involved uh, with this? Yes, so thank you very much for having me. It's um, an honor for me to be here and thanks for taking the time to interview me. So my name is Maria de Souza. I live uh, in England in the, a town uh, in Kent by the sea. Um, I used to live in London um, until two years ago where I lived for 17 years and I had a nine to five job, an office job. But I, after um, about seven years, um, of doing that job, I realized that that wasn't for me. That was something else for me to do in the world. So I was already practicing yoga um, and I fell in love by, by the practice. And then I decided to um, study and do a teacher training, a yoga teacher training. So, and that's what I did. And at the end of my teacher training, I thought um, I wanted to do something else to deepen my knowledge of the body and biomechanics. And so I embarked on a Feldenkrais method course, which I'm still doing. So it's a four year course. So I'm on my, at the end of the third year. So one more year to go. Um, and then while I was doing my yoga course and working in the office at the same time, I started realizing that people around me were in pain. Um, and then I started helping them and I, just, I, just start, I started understanding that the problem with the principal and um, mainly back pain in the offices is due to the fact that people don't understand how the body is designed to work. So people had all kind of awkward positions um, by sitting at the desk and they were in pain. So while I was in work in the office and studying my um, yoga, doing my yoga training, I started realizing that people were in pain. So I started helping them and I understa started understanding that people didn't know how to sit or mm -hmm. to stand or to walk. So people used to sit in all kinds of awkward positions. They didn't know what to do with their bodies um, while they were sitting. So, um, and that was the reason why they were in pain is because they were sitting in awkward, awkward positions, but they didn't know um, how to sit properly. And, um, and this is where it all started for me and bringing posture awareness into the world. Um, I wasn't very sure whether um, I wanted to go out into the war world and teach posture until a friend, a very good friend of mine that I was helping with their posture issues. She was in, in, in pain, back pain, and she had a really, really, really poor posture. So I was helping her and teaching her the principles of good posture and how the body is designed to work. And she just one day just turned around and asked me why wasn't I told about this when I was growing up, mm -hmm. about this, you know, the posture, the posture, the principles of posture and how the body is designed to work. Um, and that was the... Um, the um, the Ignition, point. yeah. That was, yeah, that was that, that, that would trigger me to start taking it serious and going to the world and teaching because 
frustrated. She was, um, she felt helpless because she couldn't help herself very much because it was too many years in poor posture. Mm -hmm. So she was very frustrated and she wished that someone, someone had told her all these, uh, um, all these um, things about good posture when she was growing up, and she was the one that told me, "You, you uh, must go into the world and teach these things, so that you know we, um, lots of people out there can prevent um, pain, special back pain." Mm -hmm. So this is where it all started. Me working in the office and at the same time um, studying um, yoga, and then going to the Feldenkrais um, uh, teacher training. So, what is this? Um, th how did you call it? Teach Feldenkrais Feldenk method. Yeah. So, Feldenkrais method is a, another mm, movement uh, method. It's very different from. Uh, um, it's very different and at the same time similar to yoga, um, in a way that Feldenkrais understands as well the connection between the body and the mind. Mm. So all the movements we do is um, for um, to improve the mobility of the body, to improve posture, um, but also having into account that connection with the mind that what we do with the body affects the mind. I see. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, and. Um so you mentioned about your friend who was trying to change her posture and she said why no one told me this earlier and i wonder is this is this something that's revertible can we fix this or is this something that if you carried on for a while it's very difficult to uh, to change well um everything is possible and but what we need to realize is that um because we have been in that uh, poor posture for such a long time, it won't be from one day to the next that mm -hmm. things are going to improve. So work is needed and daily work, daily exercises, and that mindset that things can improve. So yes, it is possible um, to improve posture, but there is two factors. It is... Uh, the work that needs to be done on the floor, the movements, and then your mindset. I see. Um, believing that you can change um, what needs, what you want to to, to, to change. change. Okay. And you mentioned that a posture affects us physically, and also you mentioned mindset. Can you explain that a little bit? How posture affects our mindset? Yes, of course. There is there is a lot of research out there in the world um, that uh, proves that what you, you do with your body affects um, your mind, and this is what a lot of people don't uh, understand: is that um, more than the physical, um, the, the posture affects physically. A poor posture brings you pain. Um, mainly back pain and neck pain and shoulders pain and all kind of discomfort and um, discomfort in the body um, affects your breathing because when your lungs are squeezed um, your lungs can't fo function properly but um, what a lot of people don't understand is that it also affects your mind mm -hmm. and that is because um, affects, affects the way you think, affects the way you see the world. You just have to look at people that suffer from depression. People that suffer from depression, they're not open and exposed into the world. They are more closed in this kind of hunched um, kind of posture. Um, and people that are happier, people that are healthier and are kind of very positive about life that usually more open mm -hmm. with chest open the head eye um, high um, and more um, more open to the universe and more responsible um, responsive um, to to the universe so um, yes what you do with your body affects your your mind um, and I so guess if you I guess the other thing is sometimes the, uh, maybe it's like a chicken and egg where 
your mindset may affect your body and your body might affect your mindset as well. Because we, in our discussion, we also mentioned that it affects our self-worth, our uh, confidence as well. So is it uh, if we are confident in our mindset, then that expresses in our body? Or is it if we express it with our body, then we become confident? Or is, I think that is a million, um, a million dollars question. <laughs> we don't know where it starts. It's, it's, it's that connection between the mind and, and the... Um, and 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 the body um just you have to work with both you can't yeah. just say um let's um have um good posture and if, if you have good posture your mind follows that mm -hmm. but of course your mindset also needs to be positive and uh, credible to these things for your body to follow um it as well mm -hmm. so um i don't know where it starts you know i don't think anyone knows but the important thing is that um you experiment it yourself mm -hmm. just notice when you are open and practicing um, self-awareness and practicing good posture just notice how that affects your mind and also the other way around when you are you have negative thoughts just notice how your body reacts to to that and do you do a lot of mindset exercises with your client clients as well so you're not just working on the body or do you work on the body and the mindset follows the mind. I, I usually I um, concentrate on the body, mm -hmm. um, on the exercises, floor mainly floor exercises, um, and I don't need to work on the mindset because when we work on the body, um, that affects the mind straight away. So wow. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, what are I mean. What are uh, today's issues that cause us bad posture, in your opinion? What are those things that cause us to carry the inappropriate posture? Right, so um, we all know that there is a problem with sitting mm. and you probably heard that sitting is a new smoking. Um, I, I, I personally don't like to use um, that um, idea or that expression because um, that might confuse people because mm -hmm. um, I don't um, see Porsche being the new smoking because we need to sit down. We are designed to sit down, but we are not designed to smoke. So we don't need we don't need cigarettes, but we need to sit down. So I prefer to say that sitting is like sugar. We need it, but we are abusing it. Okay. Okay. So too much sitting is the main problem nowadays, together with mobile phones. Mm -hmm. um, so those two are the main problems nowadays. Is the amount of time we spend sitting and the amount of time we spend hunched over mobile phones. And these are very easy things to address, to fix once you understand um, how. And the key thing is self-awareness. I usually say that self-awareness is self-care. So if you pay attention to the way you hold yourself when you are, for instance, holding your mobile, then you start uh, cultivating new habits, habits of good posture. And when it comes to sitting, the key thing is not as much as to buy a expensive or ergo um, ergonomic chair, um, but spend, spend less time sitting. Okay, so that is key, is spend less time sitting, just make more breaks mm -hmm. um, and just pay attention to the way you sit down, but realize that the body is not designed to sit for the amount of time we asking it to sit down for. Okay, okay. and so you recommend making a break so we can stand up, walk a little bit in the office and then come back. 
Yes. Do standing desk help? Standing desks are, desks are fantastic. Actually, I have a video out there on my YouTube um, channel about standing desks. They are great thing to have, but we need to, re to also understand how to stand. And it's not about to stand all day long, but the variety between standing and sitting. So switch from sitting down to standing, from standing to sit down. But also pay attention the way you stand um, on the standing desks. You don't want to be standing for too long on high heels, which is very typical of ladies. Yeah, yeah. Because that you only creating tension straight to the body. Mm -hmm. And also you want to make sure that your um, screen, that your computer is at the right um, level for you to work in a comfortable uh, position. But have a look at my um, YouTube video on standing post on mm -hmm. standing desks. Okay, so we will link it in the description as well, so they can uh, the audience has an easy access to it. Thank you. Um, what I mean, my my one of my questions, I think that I asked that uh, the first time that we connected was around banks and how we hold our bags. And I remember when I was younger, I was carrying like very heavy books on my back. And I did develop uh, back pains and I, my doctor said, you need to constantly do abdominal exercises to strengthen your core because you have a really weak back. Um, so what are your opinion on how we should carry our bags, how the kids should carry the bags? Is there any, any advice on that? Any secrets on how to hold a good posture? Yes, um, of course. And that is a big problem in um, schools. Not all schools, but um, a lot of schools. Um, and I'm not sure, because I don't have children, I am not too sure whether it's the school asking their children to carry that amount of weight or is because the children the children want to carry everything around so this is something for the parents to start paying attention to i see a lot of children carrying too much weight for their um body um their the the backpacks should be quite tight the handles very tight very close to the shoulders as opposed to having the backpack hanging hanging out of their back and this mm -hmm. is where the problem is when the children go around with this um, backpack um, hanging out of the back with heavy load this is where the problem is because that is only compressing the spine that in the long run will create a lot of problems okay and um, so Parents need to start paying attention how much weight children are carrying around and they need to educate the children to carry the, back, the um, backpack in the right way which is quite close to the back um, and they, with the, um, tight stripes. Um, for, so that's for the children and for Ladies, we all know that um, we carry as well too much weight in our bags, in our handbags. So we also need to pay attention how much weight we carry around. Uh, the other thing is that we tend to carry the same the bag on the same shoulder. Okay, so this is where the problems can because you're always carrying that weight on the same shoulder and that is creating um, misalignments um, on your spine because the weight is can go, mm -hmm. um, going to that shoulder and day by day, week by week, mouth by mouth and ear by ear, you're going to have a shoulder that is lower than the other. So the solution for that is, you, is for you to ch change shoulder every time you put your hand back on your shoulder, just use a different shoulder so that your shoulders don't create that habit of, um, mis of misaligning. So you kind of balancing the weight on your body by switching 
and shoulders. What I recommend as well is to have different bags, bags that you carry on your hand, bags that you carry in your shoulder, maybe those bags with double um, stripes. So the, the more vari vari variety of bags you have, the better for you because you are not creating habits in your body. I and see. those misalignments that in the long run create pain. And this is something that we need to all need to understand that back pain doesn't come from one day to the next. Back pain comes from years and years and years and years of the same habit. Okay, so a lot of youngsters, which is which is something that um, um, I um, I'm always talking about, is that youngsters come and say, "Well, I don't have back pain." Um, when I say things like that, your handbag, change, don't carry too much and then you have back pain. No, you don't have the back pain now because um, you're only doing that for the last five years or a few years. But if you carry on doing that for the next five and then 10 and then 15 and 20 years, this is where at the end of those 20 years or maybe 10, this is where you'll feel the pain. Mm, okay. okay. And this is going back to your question before, um, can we change? Can, can we get better? Yes, but remember, you've been there for 20 years or for 15 years or 10 years. To get better um, is going to take um, work. Mm -hmm. So it's best that we create the awareness. That's why I fight so much. I bring so much attention to bringing partial education to children to school so that they start cultivating that awareness of good portion so that they don't need to go through the struggles that a lot of adults go through today amazing okay um, and uh, i think we came pretty much to the end of the interview that was such a pleasure um, is there Anything you would like um, to mention to the audience um, before we close off or you're good? Yeah, I, I can give you um, one main tip for to start cultivating um, good posture is start on your mobile phone because you use it so many times. 20, 15, 100 times a day, you hold your mobile. So notice the way you hold your mobile. Most people hold their mobiles in front of the belly, and this is why you have to turn the head down. So I suggest that you start paying attention to that and start in bringing your mobile in front of your chest or more towards your head so that you don't need to hunch over your mobile, but you keep the neck straight and therefore you don't create um, pain um, in your back, in your neck, and just um, create the habit of self-awareness. As I said before, self-awareness is self-care. So pay attention to the way you are holding yourself because that's the only way you can cultivate good posture. Maria, thank you so much. That was a great tip. I'll start, I mean, from tomorrow or today even. I'll start paying more attention to how I hold my mobile phone and making sure that at least my posture is in a good place. So if someone wants to contact you, how they can uh, contact you? So uh, my website is posturequeen.co.uk. I am on Instagram, the Porter Queen. I am on Facebook, Porter Queen. And I'm in LinkedIn and I'm in Twitter and it's all the same name, Porsche Queen. So it's easy to find me, come around and um, tell me what questions you have. Tell me what, how I can help you. Um, come and see my posts um, and join my mailing list where I send tips and videos and, um, and other information about my work. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much, Maria. Well, uh, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. A pleasure too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you like this video, please support it. 
by liking it, sharing it with your friends, subscribing and commenting because I love to hear from you. See you in the next episode.